Tired of taping together your letter size PDF patterns only to realize that you still need to do alterations to them? What if I could tell you you could digitally stitch them together in Adobe Illustrator, alter them, and then seamlessly project them? Hi, I'm Christina, and I love to digitally pattern draft, creating unique pieces of wearable art. And today, I'm going to show you how you can take your letter size PDF print patterns, stitch, the, stitch them together digitally in Adobe Illustrator, <laughs> Adobe Illustrator, making it super easy for you to then alter the pattern before you project it out onto your fabric. Whether you're new to digital pattern editing or just looking for a quicker, more accurate way to prepare your patterns before you project them out, this tutorial will help you. So let's bring up my uh, pattern that we're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and use this pattern that I found. So we're just going to take a quick look at it. Uh, as the PDF. So you can see the different pages you have here. And what's really helpful is that you can actually see the print layout over here. So that is a super handy thing to be able to see what it's supposed to look like at the end. So now that we have that, I'm not going to fully close it out. I'm just going to minimize it so that I can refer back to it if I need to. I'm going to right click, open in Adobe Illustrator. And then again here, it's asking what I want to actually import. So I want to import a range and we can go back and check. So the first two pages, pages one and two, I actually don't want to import them because if I import them, that's going to kind of mess with this layout I have here. So I only want to import three to 37. So we're going to go here. We're going to import three to 37. We're going to hit okay. And it might think about it for a minute. It sometimes takes a little bit to fully put everything in there, but once it's there, brings it up, and we have our pattern fully in there. Now, it has used different fonts than I actually have saved on my computer. So if this comes up, all you want to do is we just want to go through and we want to replace these fonts. We want to make sure that we replace them because it'll just get cranky if you don't. So I'm just going to select, select the basic one, hit change all. It's going to think about it for a second. And then it's going to go good. I'm going to click on the next one. And we're going to hit change all. It's going to think about it. There it goes. And we're good. It's all done. I do highly recommend doing that because if you don't, it will just get cranky at you a little bit. So the next thing I want to know is I want to know what their margins are. Most people use a half inch that I've seen, but I always want to double check that they are actually using a half inch margin. So I'm going to bring up my line tool, get right on top of that line, hold shift and go to the edge of their paper. And it looks like it's at 49, but I bet it's actually right at 50. I'm going to go right at 50, um, 50, <laughs> right at half of an inch. So we know that's good. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to back out just a little bit. Oh, my computer's running just a little slow. Let's see if it there's uh, there is a lot of information that is happening within this document. So they can I have found that they do sometimes run a little bit slower um, because of all the information within the document. There we go. Once I am zoomed out a little bit, we're just going to center this just a little bit. There it goes. So we're going to center it. Now we actually want to align everything. So we could painstakingly move all these individually, but we're going to do it the easy way. So we're going to go to document setup, click on this edit artboards. Then we're going to click rearrange all. And we're going to see there are a one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to want five columns spacing. This is where, this is what it's currently set at, at about a quarter inch between each one, but we want them to overlap by half an inch. So we're going to go negative 0.5. And you want to make sure that this move the artwork with the artboard is also clicked because if you don't, it'll move all the artboards and leave all the artwork on top of it where it is, which is not what we want. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now it's probably going to think about, again, big file. It's going to be processing and moving everything around. 
um, yeah, it clicked and it just might take a second or two to fully rearrange what's going on. Let's see here. There it goes. Nice and fast. So you can see up here, I can then get off of that. Uh, you can see up here, these pants look great. Perfect. But down here, something funky is happening. And we also knew that this was going to happen because when we were first looking at this pattern, we could see that F only had one, two, three, four, G had three, and H also only had three. So this is something that we knew was going to happen. So we just had to be aware of it. So now we actually have to go and uh, move these guys around. Now you could move the artboards, but because once I move everything around, I like to create a new file with just the size or sizes I want. So I'm not going to worry about moving the artboards. I'm just going to move the artwork. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to start with the H's because the G1 has to get moved over here. Um, and these two have to get moved over. But the H's are first in my way. So I'm going to highlight the three H's. And then I'm going to click on them, drag them. And we're going to line them up as best we can. Let's zoom in on them. And it looks like they lined up beautifully. Love it. So I'm not going to worry about that. Now I'm going to grab the two G's that are here. And then I can grab this and I can actually, oh, come on. Okay, we're going to hold shift so I can grab them both. There it goes. <laughs> you want to grab them both. And then if you hold shift, you'll actually only be able to move it on the right, the same plane. So then I can hold shift and it just slides it right over for me, which is super handy. And then the last one I need to move is this G1. Move it there. And there we have it. We now have our pants fully aligned on our pattern. So the next thing we want to do is we want to pick the size that we need to actually move it off so that we can then work with it. If you are looking to change between sizes, that is a different thing and a different video. You can check that out. Um, but right now we're just going to work off of a single size and we're going to go ahead and we're just going to pick one right in the middle, size 14. So hopefully you can tell <laughs> which the size 14 is. I think it's this one right here. If not, you might have to check zero, zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Yes. So it's that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that 14. Then we're going to right click. We're going to hit ungroup. We're going to click off. Then we're going to click on that 14 again. Right click. We're going to release clipping mask. We're going to unclick. Then we're going to click on that 14 again. It's still stuck. So we're going to right click, release clipping mask, click off, click on that 14, right click. It still is needing it. And oh, click off, click on. And there you have it. You can see it's now past this line. So I can now actually grab it. So what I can do is I can now hit and hold alt and pull that pattern off. I actually think I went right off the artboard a little bit. So we're going to try that one more time. There we go. And I can fill that pattern in so you can kind of see what is happening. There we go. And then we're going to move it all the way off so that it's completely off that board. Now we have to go do the same with our pattern up here. So we're going to zoom into this guy here. It's going to be that same one. So we're going to click on it, right click, ungroup, off click, click on it, right click, release, click, right click, release, click. It's still blocking it. I should have counted how many times I had to release it because it should be the same. There, now you can see it's not just highlighting the square, it's highlighting the whole thing. I can hit and hold. I can pull it off. We can give it a fill in color. Back up off of it. <clears throat> Let 
My illustrator's moving quite slow today. As you can see, I kept backing off because I didn't think it was connecting and it just, it kept going. Um, so next we're going to do the pocket here. So we're going to get nice and close to it. Same thing. We're going to click on it. We're going to... Oh, are you fully off already? Can I... I can. So, and let's fill you in. So this was not clipping mask, so I might have actually undone it. I don't know when I would have done that. Um, yeah, but we didn't grab... What are you doing? I don't like what it's doing. That's very odd that it's doing it that way. We're going to zoom back in. Oh, I'm on the wrong tool. That fixes the problem. Make sure you are on the correct tool when you're trying to work on these things. I thought I had changed. You want to be on the select all, not the direct select. That is why. I was just like, something is off. So now we ungrouped. Now we're going to release the clipping mask. We're going to release the clipping mask. We're going to release the clipping mask. And then... Because we released it and we pulled some out beforehand, they just showed up. So I'm going to delete one of those. <laughs> and that will magically fix our lovely problem. Uh, and then we actually have all of our patterns. Now, one thing that you might want to do before you actually like move this to a different artboard or anything, you might want to put in some of these notches and everything to actually transform like where they line up, uh, the grain lines specifically and everything. Uh, you'll want to transfer those. But I like to always, if I'm just happy with the straight pattern, I like to grab those, grab some of those markings and everything. Uh, for instance, I bet we can just, can I grab the, are you going to let me grab the words? You are not. Because I still will have to ungroup and release clipping masks. So, yeah, I normally will just type on that, regroup it, and then we will, I would create a new artboard, copy these three patterns onto it, and then if I need to alter it or anything before I actually project it out, I can do that. And then I can even do any minor um, alterations that I like to do for the projector, uh, like, you know, thicken up that line so it's easier to see and make sure that I have the grid so I know that I'm sizing and scaling it correctly. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you can see other ways to digitally pattern draft and then possibly even project your patterns out onto the floor. I look forward to seeing you in some of my other videos. Happy patterning!